everybody. This is Julie Edwards. Hope you're having a great night. The best part of all, guess what? The rain is just about out of here. They're promising that by tomorrow morning, we should we should see sunshine uh, for a few days to come. We got sunshine though in the studio tonight. Dr. Nick Circalone is here for Health Chat. How are you? I'm doing great. You know, it's so funny. It's every time I see you, it's raining out. I know. What does that say about you? I, I, I don't know. But I'm not gloomy like it is outside. No, I you know. Told- I told you on the way in, I was a little bit tired, and I thought, wait, wake up, Julie, wake up, Julie Nick's in the studio tonight. <laughs> I don't think you ever have a bad day. You know, if I have a bad day, you know, I'll do it at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to talk a lot for people listening tonight on some things that you've got going on at Apple Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation that's going to help them to not have bad days anymore, because a lot of the patients who come into your office, Nick, are there because you've just had a an injury, some kind of an acute issue that you can help them work their way through. But then for other people, it's chronic. And for those chronic pain sufferers, they're the ones who you're really so excited about right now. And and I am. And I'll tell you what, what's really kind of cool about the whole thing, I I have to tell you this, I I had this like realization today. You know, after Dr. Dooley had passed away, the, the office went through this giant transformation. You know, I, I had a yeah, bunch you went of through some hard times. Yeah, we had a bunch of people that worked for us, you know, and then we, we I was down to one person and I'm like, oh, wow. You know, are we ever going to pull out of this? Is this going to be, you know, it, it, it was tragic losing a friend, mm-hmm. you know, and a business partner. And I was sitting today thinking, oh, my gosh, starting next week, I have five employees. Wow. I said, where did that come from? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I know so, where you said that came from. Where? Your faith. Yes, it, it it has. You know, the Lord has really blessed. I, I, I can't say that enough. It, it's been amazing, the journey and, and what I have learned in these past four and a half years. When I thought God wasn't there, he was there. Mm-hmm. There were times, and I tell people, as we're, we're not going to get too religious, but I will say this because that's where I believe things come from. There were times when I looked at God and I went, um, I'm here. Can you see me? Are you right. listening to me? And it's like, ah! <laughs> like Tevye and Fiddler on the Roof. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, but I wasn't singing if I was a rich man. <laughs> they, <laughs> I, there was so much that went on that I learned, and I'm starting to realize that I've been changing this whole time, and I'm still walking in faith. That is something hard to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, step off the boat and walk on the water. But it also gives you, then, I think, a nice perspective to bring to your patients. And and you're not alone in that. There are plenty of people in varying professions who've had some kind of obstacle to overcome, and now all of a sudden it opens their eyes maybe in a new way to how to be empathetic with the people whose lives come in touch with their own. Um, but I know you're a believer in that perfect timing, so you are sharing with me that these new things that you're now doing are really at the perfect time, not just for you, but for Chattanooga. Yeah, and, and they are. You know, we were talking about, you know, we, I have patients that come in the office, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of times they'll come in with an acute situation, we'll get them better, and they feel better. Now, there's other times when patients come in, and I'm a firm believer in maintenance care. I, I am. But there are those people that come in, and I'm palliative. Hmm. They feel better after they leave. They feel better for a few days. They'll come back in a month going, I, I, could, I need to see you every day because I hurt every day. If you hurt every day, we're not talking about, you know, I got, I, you know, I got this little pain. I can walk through it. We're talking about people that are taking medication to get through their day because the pain has definitely changed their life. Mm-hmm. There's taking medication to survive. Some people are in there going, you know, I can't even play with my kids. I can't play with my grandkids. I can't even walk in the supermarket without being in tremendous pain. You know, you see people that are in these little um, electric carts in the, in the supermarket, or you right. see people leaning on their buggies, and it's look like, you look so miserable. Mm-hmm. And they're not miserable. They're dealing with chronic pain. And when... I was approached by the uh, Stevax company to do this neurostimulator for pain control. I was like, oh, my, this is right in our wheelhouse. Okay, I'm going to interrupt you a minute. So this is what we talked about last month when yes. you were here. This is the brand new thing. It's called Stevax. Yes. When you first told me about it in a commercial break before we went on the air, 
uh, last month. I really couldn't believe it. But once I accepted the truth of what you're telling me, I was so excited because this is really revolutionary for people. How does it work? It, it really does. And and here's how it is. It's one of these things that when when people take medication, you have to titrate it into the system. So if you, if you notice, if you're given a prescription, you have to take it at different intervals during the day. Because what, they, what you want to do is you want to be able to take that medication and not have it fade off too far into a valley because trying to get back up to that peak takes sometimes takes extra to do that. Okay. So what, what you try to do is you try to take that medication so you don't have so many valleys. Stay ahead of the pain. Exactly. So what Stevax does, in, in a quick, short nutshell... It stimulates the vagus nerve, and it allows the body to stimulate other nerves indirectly to increase endorphins. So as the unit has a little bit of a pulse in it, and it's put in the auricular of the ear, it's in there for two weeks, and off for a week, in for two weeks, off for a week, in for two weeks, and then it's done. So, But in that time period, your body, and we're adjusting it to get your pain level to a certain point where you're comfortable with it. Some people have less, more pain relief than others. Some people get 50%. So we're looking at a 50%. We tell most patients that you're going to get 50%. Well, if you're in chronic pain for years and years and years and years and years, right. 50% is huge. So what happens is after for that period of time that you have this unit and it's stimulating that nerve and causing your endorphin levels to find their own level, it's just like muscle memory. Once the unit's removed... Those endorphins will stay at that level knowing – so your your endorphin levels are now killing the pain that you had before at least at a 50% level. Okay. We're going to talk as the hour goes along. And by the way, if you're listening tonight and maybe you're suffering from chronic pain or you know someone who is, feel free to call in and talk with Dr. Circalone because he'll listen to your particular story and tell you honestly if he thinks, you know, this really could help you or, no, let's maybe try something else. But the number is 267-1023. You can call in and talk. Uh, to Nick, if you're listening, though, and you know somebody who's older, maybe there's somebody in their, I don't know, mid-70s, let's just say, um, and they think, well, all I can do is accept it and deal with it now. Can they be helped with Absolutely. this? Absolutely. There, there's a couple of contraindications, and we'll go over them. But here's the thing. We have young people that are suffering with fibromyalgia. They're suffering with migraine headaches. They're suffering with some sort of chronic pain. Chronic pain is what this was designed for. This was designed to treat chronic pain. There are three contraindications. The first contraindication is pregnancy. And then the other two you have to wait for. That's the T's going into the break, okay? That's fine. Because if you know that you're listening and you know that you know people who are out there living with chronic pain, so keep listening in. We're going to talk more about Stevax, some other great things that Nick is doing at Apple Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. We're going to keep you on the line. We're back in just a minute. Welcome back to Health Chat, everybody. When we left you at the commercial break, Nick was giving us three contraindicators for Stevax. Did I say that right? Yes. So I put you on pause because I wanted to let people have plenty of time to hear you. We were pushing a commercial break. So the first one you said was pregnancy. If yes. you're pregnant, you can't use it? Is that what you're you saying? You can't. And if you have uh, a pacemaker, you cannot use it. Okay. And if you're on blood thinners. Okay. Now, those are contraindications. If you are on blood thinners, depending on what you're on, how bad the bleeding is, if we talk to your your doctor and they say, no, 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 we're okay with this, we're good. We can do it. But those are the three major contraindications. Okay. It, you can't OD on it. You know, you can't get addicted to it. It's it, There's nothing that you're consuming or ingesting. If you have a hearing aid or one of those, it's, those things aren't affected by it. So how does it work? What does Steve, how does Steve Ax do? If I the tell you how it, it works, then, then that beats the whole thing. It's like the not... Chick-fil-A secret breading yes, recipe? Yes, you can't, we can't really talk about it. No. What it is, <laughs> as I said earlier, basically what it's doing, it's stimulating nerves by a small impulse and telling them, hey, we get your endorphins going. It's like, you know, when you run, you get that high? Yeah. Okay. It gets these endorphins going, and the, the, the endorphins are major painkillers, major painkillers. And once those endorphin levels are killing your pain, they're not making you high. What they're doing is they're, they're leveling out your body, and you're getting into this homeostasis even with the pain. So as you get into that, 
and your body starts functioning at optimal levels and you feel better, what are you going to do? You're going to start doing more activity. This is my theory. You're going to do more activity. Depression is going to start to go away because pain leads, you know, depression is sometimes a byproduct of pain. Okay, so I'm going to pause you because you know this topic so well, and maybe people listening do too, but sometimes it's nice to break it off into chunks. Um, I learned this firsthand through somebody who I love very much who had chronic pain. And this person, because the pain was so severe, could not exercise. It was just not an option for this person. So it began this domino effect like you're talking about. Uh, Physically, they kind of lost who they had once been. Uh, The pain was always there. I think I have this right, that then cortisol kind of can build up in your brain, which eats away at other things, which you can talk about, and you don't get any of these endorphins that you're saying this DVAX wonderfully supplies. So you're you're working against yourself every day. Exactly. And this is basically going to sh- shut that or actually increase endorphin levels, shutting off or decreasing the pain so that way you can function normally. Here's the thing. You know, we were talking earlier this all came about because we're, we're developing an osteoarthritic clinic in the office for osteoarthritic knees, shoulders, hips. We're, we're, we're injecting, we're, we're starting out with a hyaluronic acid injection, okay? People have heard what it. What is that? Basically, it's, it, they, somebody found it in the coxcomb of the rooster, and they realized that this, this helps rebuild cartilage. I don't Who know. Who goes they, digging they, around in the coxcomb of the rooster? I have no idea. Okay. So, <laughs> th- so this is one of these... Um, medicines that are injected directly into the joints and help revitalize and help rebuild the cartilage in the joints. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on how bad it is. And this is FDA approved, yes. right? So insurance typically covers it? Covers it. Now, PRP is this big, you know, plasma-rich protein. You hear a lot of it when sports now. Uh, somebody gets injured, you hear, oh, I have a PRP sir. What we do is we pull a vial of blood out and we have a medium in the vial, and you spin this vial in a centrifuge, and what's left is a large amount of these platelet-rich proteins. And you draw them out, and you inject them into the knee. So there's a lot of healing properties with them. There's a lot of anti-inflammatory properties with them. And there's rejuvenating properties in them. So that essentially now your body has what it needs to heal itself. Yes. So in the meantime... Your people are getting cortisone shots in these joints. We're just using the knee for, for now, but you get cortisone shots in joints. Well, cortisone is going to eventually irritate and wear out a lot and, and affect the bone. So you're in a lot of pain when you have this kind of knee issue, hip issue, shoulder issue. So what we're doing, instead of giving patients medication to get over the pain while we're going through this process, because now... Once we do the process, once we do the injection, if we do the PRP, and then if, let's say, the PRP doesn't work, we can do stem cells. Okay. Mesochymal, mesochymal stem cells. Okay, before we get to the stem cells, uh, you were talking about the cortisone shots. A lot of people are familiar with that. Sometimes it's been almost like the first go to. Uh, it it is the first go-to, to decrease the inflammation, because you want that pain down, you want the inflammation down, and that's the way to do it. But is that an example of how very often, maybe because we had to before, but you treat the symptom, not the cause? This is treating the cause, thereby offering you what ought to be really a solution. Well, here's the kicker about that. Yes, when, when you go in to see the doctor and he sees you have an inflammatory knee and it's causing you all of this pain... The job is let's get you out of pain. Gives you a cortisone cortisol injection. You feel a cortisone injection. You feel better. So you go do your normal activity and you never see the doctor again. And then you keep injuring it and injuring it and injuring it. And then two or three years later, sometimes two or three months later, you're like, this is back again. Give me another shot. I don't want a knee replacement. I don't want a knee replacement. Give you another shot. Give you another shot. Give you another shot. So now you're uh, several years down the line and you got to get a knee replacement. So what we're trying to do now is we're, when you come into the office, we're trying not to use corticosteroids in there. We can, but we're trying to use more of a plant steroid because corticosteroids do other things to your body. So what we're trying to do is we're using what's known as a, um, not, Suparts is one of the injectables that we use for the knee, but the other one is Serapin. Serapin is a non-steroidal plant steroid. 
It does not work as fast, I will say that, as a corticosteroid, but it doesn't do the damage that the corticosteroids do. Okay, so if someone comes in and they're really hurting, I guess first you have to see what level of pain they're un- they're on at the moment. But if they can possibly handle it to let time work for these injections to do their job that's not the cortisone, that's ideal because if you give a cortisone shot, then if they begin to feel better, you won't know if it's the cortisone or the other. Exactly. That's causing it. But but here's here's the process. Real quick. Come in with it. Let's do a knee. You come in with a knee. You have an E issue. We, we start out with trying to get the inflammation down. We do the injection of the hyaluronic acid. Let's just say that's what we're doing there. We're also going to brace it. So now we're putting that knee into a position where there's not so much strain on it as an, if you're knock kneed. We're bringing that back to a neutral position. So now that the, the medications can work. But we're also now part of the protocol using the, the Stevax unit to help control the pain while you're going through the process. Okay, wait a minute. I, always I have to pause you, Nick. You just said... Get too excited. Don't pause me. Can't stop I like me. it. Don't, you never get too excited. <laughs> so you said if you're knock need as an example. Yeah, well, wait, wait, yes. A lot are of people... Are you saying that, that by giving these PRP... Well, we, we're talking... We, all of this we, we, is going to have the same protocol. Okay, by giving, though, these, these um, non-corticosteroid injections that's allowing the body to kind of heal that would that would allow you to move bone no what we're doing is we're bracing it we're putting a literally putting a brace on it to help oh, bring it into it. position okay you may you know it's not going to change the knock need but what's going to happen is while your d is starting to regenerate and starting to heal well, maybe not regenerating but healing by this brace being there it's not it's very lightweight it's as as heavy as our earphones are the braces but it's enough to stabilize the knee and pull and decompress that area while that medication is able to work. And that's something new that you're doing too? Oh, that's all part of the protocol. So, okay. There's a whole protocol that, that's very different than everybody else. Being in the neuromusculoskeletal condition business, my job is I'm looking at function and we're looking at pain. How can we get you out of pain, improve your function, and decrease later on uh, damage in the future. So right now, the injections are a part of it. The bracing is part of it. The Stevax is part of it. Physical therapy is part of it. We're, we're, we're bringing it all in one spot. So when the patient comes in, we're not just giving them an injection and they're going out the door and we don't know what's happening. We're literally monitoring these patients for several weeks. Can you give me some other examples? I hate to put you on the spot, but sure. of how you might brace someone. What are other issues that you might use a brace for or is it pretty much just that knock need no it, i'm just i just use knock need as an example right i know i, I just didn't know if there are other conditions that you might use it if you for. if you have a decrease in the in the space in the of the knee mm-hmm. this will help increase the space a little bit okay so, so if you're a runner and you're had knee problems this could help you yes yeah and you know it depends on what it is you know are we going to use the hyaluronic acid first are we going to use PRP first, or are we going to go right to stem cells? It, it all depends on the patient. Every patient is going to be different. I've told you for years that every patient that walks through my office is dynamic. Right. They're different. What you get, somebody else is not going to get. Okay. You mentioned the neuromuscular skeletal focus that you have. Mm-hmm. We really haven't talked this time around. We have before. The fact that you are an orthopedic chiropractor. Yes. That's a very high subspecialty that you have. Yes. Very, very rare if you will there are only how many of you in the country well there's very few of us let's put it that way <laughs> <laughs> we always knew that was a rare it was something rare about you and you uh, but you know you know how i feel about talking about myself about these things but i know but explain it to people we're, we're what actually that we're uh, uh, by having that three-year postgraduate degree it's not a certificate i had to take cla- I, I took 360 hours of class time had to sit for a national board exam before i got my extra diploma we're tech well we're in the top one percent of our profession is what it is um very rare when i see somebody we we had a convention uh last year we went to convention there was 50 of us there not even i think there was yeah 50 of us there out of how many chiropractors in the united states so when people come in you know that a lot of us have gotten more accustomed to what chiropractors can do but there is still the mindset of the pop and crack kind of thing that's not really what you do, is it? Well, 
It depends on who it is. Again, every, but a lot of your adjustments, you're adjusted and don't even know it. A lot of people, yeah, I, I tell everybody it's a self-adjustment. You know, <laughs> I, I've, I've had patients come in. I've been, I've been going to chiropractor for years, and I didn't feel a thing, but I've never felt better in my whole life because it's different. I mean, I, I, I could have hundreds of patients come in here and go, I don't know what the man does, but I feel tons better. And I'm not one, again, we don't have you come in, 365 visits, it's going to take you this long, you got to pay me this much money up front. It's none of that. My, my job is to get you, and it always has been, to get you from pain to function. I want you back doing your normal activities of daily living. You already have a family. You don't have to be part of my family every <laughs> single day. <laughs> it's true, but I do believe in maintenance care. I do believe that... As, as chiropractic care is so awesome for overall health that my patients come in on, you know, regular basis to get adjusted because it helps their life be better. Not only that is, but when I have patients in the office, I have the opportunity not only to adjust their spine, adjust their ankles, adjust their knees, adjust their shoulders, but I also have the opportunity to talk about lifestyle changes. Okay, and let's pick up on that when we come back because you, you also mentioned the buzzword of depression. Uh, there's a conference going on next week that brings focus to this very thing um, that Nick might, he's not a part of it, but he might want to chime in on it. More with Nick Circleone and Health Chat when we come back. He's not dancing in the streets, but he's dancing in the studio, Nick Circolone is. I was just talking to him during the commercial break, and I said, Nick, do you ever have times where you get in the car and go home and you just, your brain doesn't work? And you honestly said to me, nope. You're always clear-headed, aren't you? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I did not say that. You know, Megan uh, used to work for me, Megan May. She still does you know, periodically. But Megan used to go, I, 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 I wouldn't want to be in your brain. <laughs> And I was talking, and when she was helping me as we're, as the practice is growing, she was talking to some of the, the other staff, and she looks, and they just look at me like a deer frozen in headlights. And she looks at me, and she goes, understand something. He's already 10 steps ahead of what he's talking to you about. Yeah. And, and that's how I think. His brain is northern, too, right? Yeah. It's always going fast. <laughs> it's um, like, yeah, yeah, you're doing. Uh, <laughs> well, it's relevant because we were talking. Um, we're going to talk about stem cells. We haven't discussed that much in the course of the hour. We but, just need two hours. <laughs> maybe three. Um, if I can get my brain to keep up with your brain. <laughs> but you were, we were talking about time. I said, Nick, it's just so hard. There's only so much time in the day. Yeah. Talking about our kids, really, and things we'd love to be able to do with them. Um, But you said that's one of the reasons, too, why you're so happy to offer what you can, because for your patients, once they're there in the course of the 30 minutes to the hour, they're getting all of these different things in one stop. And we're not trying to be the end all be all for everything. We're not. Um, I I said something today. I was talking to uh, Reed Minton, who's our um, nurse practitioner, and Dr. Soldo is our um, medical uh, director of the office. And... (laughs) What was really interesting about it was we're, we're working to get people better, but we're also offering other things. Uh, one of them is the Boston Heart. It, it's just a great, 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 great. So it's, it's the Boston a, Heart. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a blood test. It's like this huge blood test. Oh, so, I've heard about yes. this. How does it work? So uh, bef- that's a whole nother show. We'll, oh. And we'll talk about that. But Next month. Yeah. But really, what, the reason why I'm saying is we're not there to be your PCP. We're not there to be your nutritionist. We're there to give you this information, point you in the right direction, give it to your primary care physician so that they can do a better job for you. We're, we're not looking to go down a road that we're not comfortable with. You know, musculoskeletal, neuromusculoskeletal, that's what we do. Not, you know, we're not primary care doctors. We're, we're, that's not what we do. But it is part of what we do. Mm-hmm. You know, a, as I'm licensed in the state of Tennessee as a primary care physician, what that means is that whatever information I attain, obtain from you, mm-hmm. I have to take that information, assimilate it, and make sure that you get to the right place for the right treatment. That's basically what that means. Okay, so let's talk about stem cells. Um, quick disclaimer, you said this is expensive. Yes, this so is, is, yes, it is. So is PRP. Okay. Well, PRP... Not as, not as expensive. Because the... And, and you have to make sure that you're recommending it in the right circumstance because it is money out of pocket. Yes. So you want to be pretty sure that it's going to work, right? And you know, nothing's a guarantee. 
However, I'm, I'm very selective on the patients that we do it on because right. if, if I do it on everybody, then then it's it, it's not worth it because mm-hmm. now you just pay. Now it's for money. And that's not I've never been about that. So who would benefit from the stem cell part of it? And how does it work? What does okay. it do? First off, the, everybody has this big whoo about stem cells. It's mesenchymal stem cells. It comes from the placental. That's where it comes from. So some of and the umbilical cord. What you want to think about when you think about stem cells is you're looking at cells that once they touch something, we're going to make it real simple. Once they touch something, so let's say they touch a cartilage, they become cartilage. Once they touch bone, they become bone. So if there's damage to an area, these stem cells help regenerate those areas and and literally do that. We've seen them actually change tissue in organs of the body. Now, I will tell you something, and this is really important. The FDA has really come down on stem cells because what happens is when you get these stem cells, you buy them, inject them into a joint, and you'll have some extra. So what people were doing, and even before that, they were ordering these stem cells and putting them through the body intravenously. So they're going everywhere. Oh, wow. And that's great because now it's affecting, you know, there there are people. It's like the fountain of youth almost. It is. But some of it, you know, let's look at it historically. What happens if that cell, if it, just like I said, if it becomes another tissue, what happens if it touches some cancer that you didn't know you had? Mm-hmm. And it turns into cancer cells. That's a possibility. Right. So what's happening is the FDA has now come out, and there's new, they're coming out with some new guidelines, and you'll probably see them within the next six months as being, this is the way it's going to be, that they're only going to approve stem cells for joints unless they're done in a more controlled environment. So if they want to inject stem cells into the pancreas to form and help rebuild the pancreas, that's going to be in a controlled environment. If they want to use these stem cells in Parkinson's disease... They want to get that into a controlled environment instead of just shoving stem cells mm-hmm. through somebody's body and going, okay, here we go. It's just like rolling dice. Is it going to hit the right spot or is it not going to hit the right spot? So the the are the originating source of these stem cells, you said, is a placenta mm-hmm. So and the umbilical cord, right? You have to go through a tissue bank to get them. Okay. They have to go through a purification process. And it's that, that, all of that, you, you have a time period from when you get them, when they're ordered, to when you put them into the body. I'm trying to remember when I had my children, and it seems like with my first daughter, who turns 20 this summer, this was an option for us to have saved all of that. Yes. And we thought about it, but you had to store it somewhere, and um, we didn't do it. Now it's commonplace. It's very common, but these are coming from births like that. Yes, these are not fetal stem cells. Okay. Yeah, Just we, wanted to clarify that yeah, for people. No, no, they, they aren't, and, and people have to be aware that this, at, when, we, when they first came out, that was the biggest drawback or the biggest concern for people but this is this is already from patients donating the placenta the umbilical cord and things like that and there's enough in there but they have to go through a process to make sure that they're basically i'm just going to say it this way but they're, they're clean and sterile so that when they're used they're not you're not putting something into a body that's bad so we look for companies that have been around from the beginning somebody that has the mm-hmm. best possible stem cells that you can get. And there's different companies been, you know, that's another story. We won't go into all the companies, but you, you, we find the best company, which means I, instead of putting a stem cell in you that I'm paying less money for, mm-hmm. I'm getting the best stem cell Thank you. For, the, for the money. I'm getting the best I possibly can, which is expensive. So what happens is, I'm just going to be honest with you, if I gave you less stem cells, I make more money. Or, or excuse me, l- less, less expensive stem, stem cells. cells. I make I make more money. I don't care about that. I want the best possible stem cells sure. to put into your body that will function the best because once you get the great result, you're going to tell more people about me. Right. Okay, so now to who benefits from it? Who who would be the candidate for this type of a procedure? And right. is it just the one injection or is it multiple? Uh usually usually we do one and brace it and do the PT and everything else. The process is very different because the cells are so fragile. So you have to be very careful with it. You cannot heat these up. You can, in other words, you can't tell somebody, well, I want you to exercise once I do the stem cells. No. The bracing is very important in this case because now we're, we're giving it at the space. We want to keep the heat away from it as much as we possibly can. Make sure the inflammation is gone before we do it because the inflammation will kill those cells. So 
let's who who benefits from this? Somebody who has tried everything short of a knee replacement. And they're going, I don't want to get a knee replacement. Those are the patients that need this. Is it just for knees? Can you use it for other parts? You of can. Your body? You can use it for joints. Remember, the FDA uh-huh. is going to just let you. So you can use it for the shoulder. You can use it for the hip. Okay. You can use it for the knee. You can use it for the ankle. You can use it for the wrists, you, you, your elbows. You can use it in a lot of places. But, you know, primarily right now they're using them in the larger joints, you know, hips, knees, mm-hmm. shoulders. Those are the big ones. But you can use them in other places. When you inject this, it's a whole different process. What's the cool thing about what we do, and we didn't talk about this, is we're doing them under fluoroscopy. Most injections are done blindly. They're done, you know, you palpate, you, you, you find the landmarks, you give the injection, there it is. What we do is we put you under a fluoroscopy unit, we inject a little bit of contrast, we look to see where the contrast goes, and then we put the um, injectable in there, whether it be... PRP, whether it be hyaluronic acid or stem cells. Okay, I want to ask you more about that. we got to catch our last commercial break. I also want to come back to the Stevax and ask something else about that when we you come got back. It. You good with that? Of course. Health chat right after this. I want to get your forecast in for you, too, before the night slips away, because it's going to be a good one, and we all want some good news, right? Aren't you sick of the rain, Nick Circalone? Of course. Chattanooga Allergy Clinic bringing you the forecast tonight. So uh, showers are going to end overnight, low around 49. Then tomorrow, oh, that sun comes out, a high near 73. Continues into the day on Saturday. Some gusty winds pick up, but still that beautiful high of 73 degrees. Don't let the spring allergies and the summer uh, grasses get you down. Give them a call at the Chattanooga Allergy Clinic, 899-0431. Eight locations to make it easy for you, Chattanooga Allergy Clinic. Dot com. So when we began, we were talking about Stevax, uh, and you talked about chronic pain. And if I'm remembering correctly, last month we had somebody call in talking about migraines. Uh, you've really seen great results with migraines, especially and Any, Stevax. Anything with the, the chronic pain that you're dealing with, and, and like I said, a, a lot of what we're doing is musculoskeletal. Mm-hmm. So when by the time a patient comes to see me, they've been in a lot of pain for a long time. So. We've just added this part of our protocol, saying, okay, let's use this while we're going through the treatment to help decrease the pain. And so now, while you're going through the normal treatment, why wait till it's over to start it? Let's start it now. How do you know if you have chronic pain, though? Because I guess, first of all, pain is a relative term, right? It's different for everybody. Is have that- you had pain more than 16 weeks? That's chronic. That's that's how you... But most of the time you have a patient that has pain for years and years and years and years and years. And they live with it. Some do better than others. Some don't. So, some have chronic pain and they're like, surgery didn't help me. It's, it's you know, I have patients now, I have one patient in particular who came into the office and is, I mean, he has been fighting this surgery for <clears throat> six months. You mean he had surgery or no, he's fighting to no. avoid it? he's trying to avoid it. So he's doing everything. Came into my office yesterday and I said, you need surgery. They look at me like, you believe in surgery? Of course I believe in surgery. It's like, you know, there are certain times you need things. But the surgery is going to help a funk, excuse me, a problem that's structural that needs to be fixed. I mean, it's a disc that's just squishing a nerve, get you out of that pain. There's other things that are constant pain generators. You're not going to be totally out of pain after the surgery. And his surgeon said the same thing. He's like, well, what do I do? I said, you're a prime candidate for Stevax. So in that case, as soon as he's done his surgery, he's going to have some pain. We're going to do this. We're going to put the Stevax. Okay, in. and that's where we haven't talked much about the physical rehabilitation side of the practice. And I don't know how much physical therapy you're doing these days. Well, we're 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 getting ready to ramp it up too. We're okay. Look, yeah. We're, because we'll be that's doing. part of it. If you've gone through a surgery and exactly. now you don't hurt, hurt courtesy of the Stevax, but you got to get that area strong again. So you've got to have the rehabilitation part of it. And, but realize that we're focusing on certain things. You know, yeah. if you have osteoarthritis, we're doing a th- something. I keep going back to the knee, but okay. if we're doing something specific for the knee, your your therapy will be revolved around your knee. Most times when you go to physical therapy right now, they have you doing a bunch of exercises by yourself. And 
you're overseen, but it's not really that much hands-on exercising stuff. Mm-hmm. We're going to bring that back, and that's the way we want to do it. Because when Dr. Dooley was alive, that's what he did. He was physically out there doing things with you. And if you're physically doing things, we're getting rid of a lot of the equipment and starting doing low-tech. Because if you can do low-tech, you'll do it at home. And that's the key. So when people come in to see you for the first time, if they're listening tonight and they think, you know, I think I want to go call him uh, about checking out that Steve X. First thing, it all starts is just meeting with you, right? And yeah. you have to he- you really have to hear what they've been dealing with. You know, and I, I'm going, I went out and I've changed my perspective on something. I, I do not do free exams, free x-rays. Or I don't do any of that. However, when it comes to something like this, you, you know, you're, if we're going to do the, the sit-vax, uh, Steve-vax rather, and I was, I was going to put two words together. Mm-hmm. Steve, actually, we're going to be doing the uh, knee injections. What, what we're going to do is you'll come and talk to me. You may or may not be a candidate for this. If you're a candidate for it, great. But that's going to be a free consultation. So, so I have to set time up for patients to talk to me about that. Okay, so if you call, by the way, give us the phone number. It's 423-855-7376. And if you don't know where his office is, it's right there on Shallowford Road by the Hamilton YMCA. And I also have a second office in Sale Creek. That's right, you do. It's That's my satellite office that I'm there. I'm there one day a week, um, and we're also seeing patients there. Um, and right next door to me is Whitney Ross, who is now a new PA, who has been wonderful. So, you know, we're having a little medical community there, which is really kind of <laughs> nice. One of, one of the things that I did want to say is, and if you look up on, go on our Apple Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation, we have a Facebook account. There will be a copy of this um, show on there so people can listen to it mm-hmm. and sh- send it to other people. And also, if you go onto Podbean and type in my name, you'll find me there too. Okay, so when people call in, they you, they need to say, "Hey, listen, I'm interested in Steve X or the PRP." They probably or stem cell or whatever they want to talk to me about. And if it's all foreign language to you, that's really okay. Just say what he was talking about on the radio, and your staff will know, and that way you'll know how to what what the appointment is before they get there. Before well, you get there, our new staff. Okay, Shay is is my office coordinator. Becca is our front desk, and she helps me in the back. We just hired a new girl, Alyssa. She starts on Monday. She's my uh, medical assistant. We have Dr. Um, Soldo, and we have Reed Minton, who is our nurse practitioner. So this is just the start of where we're going with all of this. But, you know, we're, we're like I told you the other day, we're getting a band back together. <laughs> so everybody, you know, everybody has a specialty to do, and... Nobody's employees. We work as a team. Like, you know, most of the time you'll come in and you'll see the, my nurse practitioner. He will do the exams for me. I'll come in there. We'll, I'll do my stuff. And what we'll do is we'll talk together and we'll set up a treatment plan for the patients. I will do the consultations because most people know who I am. Mm-hmm. And I feel more comfortable talking to people about that mm-hmm. and, you know, explaining. And if there's a problem, I can explain everything that's going to go on. I do not do the procedures. That's not, you know, if I do the procedures, it's malpractice because, you know, not that I can't, but it's not in my scope of practice. That's why um, Dr. Soldo and Reed can do all of this. We work together as a team. So it's not, it's not something where you're, you're left out in the cold. We talk. That's what makes this so beautiful. And do you want people, if you have chronic pain, chances are you have a long a litany of papers saved and documents saved. Bring it in. Let me look at it. You like to have that, sure right? Sure, I do. Because inevitably somebody might leave something out or you just might see something that they're not thinking of that triggers a thought in you. One one quick thing that, that you asked about bringing your records to me. One beautiful thing about having your records brought to me mm-hmm. is I scan them into my system. It doesn't take up a lot of space. And now if you go, I don't know where my records are. Hey, I gave everything to Dr. Circleone. Hey, Dr. Circleone, can I have my records... I'm going to see Dr. So-and-so. I have this problem, and I wanted to bring all my records. Sure. Bink. Press a button. Print it out. Come pick it up. So basically, we become a storage area for you. <laughs> uh, but, but, but I have all of that stuff, and, and I will go through it. Like if you have MRIs, CAT scans, you know, if you want me to look at your blood work, we'll look at everything that you have to, to make a better decision, a better choice for you. Because their mission is pain to function. That's right. right. 
Give us the phone number one last time. 855-7376. And he'll be back next month with Health Chat. Have a great night. Thank you, Julie. This is so much fun. It is so much fun. By the way, his grandson, Nicholas, has been here. He's 20 months old. Cutest thing you ever saw. (laughs) 